All right, everybody, welcome back. We are on the challenge levels. So now it's time to challenge yourself. Um, and what's very interesting is right from the get-go, we're going to be learning new stuff that was not covered in the other levels, which is why it is extremely important that you do actually do the challenge levels. So we're going to start with A, and it says collider at an angle. So right now, if we run this, this entire area is going to be part of the collider. Well, that's a big issue because this is not shaped like a normal rectangle. We can do more with this. So it says, angle the collider to fit the rolling pin. It says, set collider with multiple parameters. Set collider can take more parameters than just the shape. It also takes parameters to specify the X, Y offset, width and height, and angle. Check out the documentation for an example. So if we open the documentation, all right, it says sprite.setcollider. Sets the collider for a sprite. A collider is an invisible circle or rectangle that can have any size or position relative to the sprite and which will be used to detect collisions and overlapping with other sprites or the mouse cursor. If the sprite is checked for collision, bounce, overlapping, or mouse events, a rectangle collider is automatically created from the width and the height parameter pass at the creation of the sprite or the, from the image dimension in case of animated sprites. Often the image default rectangle collider is not appropriate for collision detection, so you can set a smaller circular or rectangular collider and offset from the sprite center. So we can see an example here where they set all that up, you know, that's all normal. Um, but then it says sprite set collider rectangle 0x, 0y, 20 height. No, yeah. 20 height, 80 width, and then negative 45 angle. And that's where we want to have some fun with this. Is it width and height or is it height and width? Let's find out. So if we come over here and okay width and then height okay good all right so um what we have to do with this is we have to put our set collider in here and then we have to rename it to the actual sprite but then we're going to click on this arrow right here and then we're going to click and then click and then click and then click and then click and now we have everything here all right now, if we look at the documentation, it tells us that normally this is going to be zero and zero. The X and the Y is going to be zero. So I'm, I'm just going to keep that as it, as that and see if we need to change it later. Um, now it's asking us for the width of the roller, which honestly, I'm going to guess and say 50. I think this might not be more than 50 pixels across. But now we need the height. Well, it is pretty long, right? So I'm going to try 250. All right. And then here's the kicker. So if I reset and run, well, okay, I got to do the angle. Well, let's reset. The angle wasn't quite 45. So I'm going to try... You know what? I can't see it, so let's try 45 for right now just to put something in there. Uh, let's run. Okay, so, right, it wasn't quite 45, but we can see already that the collider is definitely much better shaped for the rolling pin, all right? So let's try 30. There we go. That's perfect. So we know that this is 30 degrees angle. Um, it's a little too wide. It's a little too long. So let's... I'm going to put 40 and I'm going to put 200 and let's see what happens there. Oh, that's much better. I mean, we could even make it more, more perfect than that. So if we change this to like 35, maybe. And if we change this to like 180, maybe let's try. There we go. That's perfect. So if anything goes to collide with this rolling pin, it is much, much, much closer now than it had been at when we started, which is what you want. All right, so we're gonna click finish here, and then we're gonna go on to the next activity, which is debugging, awesome. So add points on collision. All right, so it says debug, add points on collision. 
Games often give you points when two sprites touch. This program does that, but notice what happens to the score as the sprites continue to touch. Your challenge is to get it so only one point is scored. There are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest way is to move one or both sprites to a different location right when the score increases. So do this. Read and run the code to understand how it works and what is going wrong. All right, so we run it. We got a coin. We got a ghost. I'm going to touch them. Oh, okay, so there we go, points. So lots of points really fast. All right, we want to avoid that. Identify the code that increases the score. So every time they, they touch, they should only be getting one point. All right, and so add a line of code so that at least one sprite moves to a new random location. All right, we can do that. I'm going to have the coin move, I think. That makes more sense in my head. So right here it says add a line of code so that at least one sprite moves to a new location. But we need to do both X and Y, right? So we're going to say coin. Is that what it's actually called? Yes. So coin, and then we're going to say random number somewhere between, let's say, 50 and 350. So that could be anywhere from here to here. All right, and then we also need Y, so we're going to do that too. Coin, so random number, 50, 350. Okay, if I did this correctly, it's going to fix the points issue, and we'll have a little bit of fun. So reset and run. All right, gotcha. Oh, wait, no, come back. Gotcha. Wait, no, come back, come back. All right, so now we've got an actual game where you've got to try and get the coin but the coin keeps moving on you and that is a lot more fun. All right, there we go. All right. So with that, we're going to click on finish and then let's go see. All right. See, so if else challenge, we love if else statements. Ha 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 ha. So, um, run what's happening here. Sad face donut. Oh, it's still sad. Okay. If touching else challenge. Use an if else statement to change the emojis move based on if it is touching the donut or not. Do this. Program the emoji to smile if it's touching the donut, otherwise the emoji should be sad. We're going to take the black triangle, we're going to open it up and it says add an if else statement to the draw loop that uses an is touching block as its condition. Inside the if, set the animation of the emoji to be happy, set the visibility of the donut to be false. Inside the else, set the animation of the emoji to be sad. Okay, so if the sad emoji touches the donut, the donut is supposed to disappear, the emoji is supposed to be happy, otherwise the emoji is just going to be sad. Okay, that's easy, we can do that. All right. Okay. So if else, we know we need that. All right. And we know we need over here. So if uh, emoji is touching donuts, that's what they're called, right? Emoji and donut. Yeah. Perfect. Then we want, um, let's see. We want to change the emoji from sad face to happy face, else the emoji is going to stay sad. But then they said something else about the donut disappearing, set the visibility of the donut to be false. All right, so we got to come up here, we got to say donut visible gets false. All right, so reset run. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, now he's sad again. That's interesting. You know what? I'm going to say donut is going to be visible. So true. Reset run. Yay. Oh. Yay. Oh. Yay. Oh. Okay, that's done. So let's finish that. 
Now, here's the thing. We've done A, B, and C together, but now comes time to play and have fun and explore. So, uh, D says food combos. Use what you've learned so far to create an animation of two foods that combine into a new, different food when they touch. For example, when a jar of peanut butter and a jar of jelly touch, they disappear and turn into a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or when a potato and a jar of ketchup touch, they disappear and turn into french fries with a side of ketchup. Well, that's fun. So this one, I'm going to let you use your imagination and uh, see what you come up with. The other challenge, definitely you should do that. Definitely. Uh, the other challenge, let's play. Let's see what this one looks like. So it says, let's play. Use what you've learned so far to create an animation of your favorite sport. For example, you could make it appear like a character kicks a soccer ball by giving velocity to the soccer ball when the character touches the ball. Ooh. You could even give yourself an extra challenge and add in a net and a score and increment the score when the ball touches the net. I love this so much. Um, and it will get you in the in thinking about how to set this kind of step up. Because, of course, we are working towards building our own game. Um, and I know you guys are going to hate me, but I really think that you should do all of these. A, B, and C I did with you. D shouldn't take more than, honestly, five minutes. Um, e is going to be the tricky one, and I love that for you because I think that you need to practice those skills. So I'm going to say do all the challenge levels, absolutely. Um and remember, you're not an island. Remember, if you need help, you can ask any of the other of your peers. You can ask me um, if it's late and you're at home trying to do this on your own. You can send me an email and I'll respond when I see it. Um, but yeah, go rock and roll. Have some fun. Think of a crazy food combo because <laughs> that'll be fun. And then, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tackle this. All right, so with that, I will say adieu, and I'll see you in class. Have, um, I don't know, what is it? Have a great day? Have, uh, whatever, maybe. Have fun. All right, bye.